Okay, so we've learnt a lot about the physics of space, mm -hmm. and this basically gives us an amazing explanation for all these puzzles we were talking about, about yeah. why the planets go in elliptical, not quite circular orbits. And this is what Isaac Newton worked out, which is why he became so famous, <laughs> that um, we've seen that if you have gravity that penetrates space, the same gravitational force that made an apple fall on Newton's head could also make Jupiter and Venus orbit the sun. And, and you're right, that's the power of it, right? It wasn't, uh, hey, it only works here, it doesn't work on Earth, it only works in space, not on, you know, this planet. It just works everywhere, and you don't need alterations to the law. So originally you had all these complicated rules about on Thursday it does this. Then you replaced it with everything goes elliptical orbits, and they have to go slower. That's still complicated. Now you just say, all we need is one law, inverse square gravity, yep. and which also works on Earth, could be tested in the yep. laboratory on Earth. You can test it at home if you really need. Well, it's pretty hard, inverse mm. square, but uh, it is possible, and people have done it in yep. barns and yep. things like we talk about in the STARS course. Yep. And the same law explains things close and have to go fast because the gravity is strong there, and they have to go fast to fight off the gravity and be able to keep going around the sun and as they go slower. And it exactly explains why you get elliptical orbits. If they're not going at quite the right speed to be in a circle, they'll be in an ellipse. That's right. So, amazing, right? It is. We can explain these wandering things with just one law, this Newton's law of gravity. Now, one thing we're still missing is a sense of scale of the solar system. Yeah. And Newton didn't know this. That's right. Now, um, for those who've done the STARS course, we all know we've spent a great deal of time talking about how you measure distances in the solar system. The basic idea is what's called parallax, that you look at an object from two positions on the Earth, and you see the difference in angle. You see the angle starting together, and then by some geometry you can work out how far away things are. As you talked about in the star section of the course, it's not quite that simple. That's right. It would involve transits of Venus and precise measurements and spacecraft and so on. But you could measure how far everything is away. Yep. And it turns out the distances are just staggeringly vast. Yes. And that's in our solar system, right? And that's the important thing is if we think of these things in the solar system as being relatively nearby, they're still pretty, pretty big. That's right. Now, you often see pictures on I like, my primary school wall of all the planets. Mm -hmm. It looks like you here's the sun and there's Jupiter and so on. That's the right. But really, here is what one planet looks like from another. We know that on Earth, all the other planets are like dots. Yes. This is a view of the Earth from Saturn, taken by the Cassini space travel. Yep. So that dot down there is is Saturn, as, as Earth, Earth, as viewed behind Saturn, and it's a dot. Yeah. And so from any planet, all the other planets just look like dots. It's same on Mars. I mean, a lot of the rovers on Mars have looked out and saw Earth, and it's a dot. It's a dot. Yes. That's it. Um, here is a view of the entire solar system taken from outside by one of the Voyager spacecraft. Yes. And there's a, a dot in the middle, which is the sun, and a few of the other dots. Some of the planets you just couldn't see at all from this distance. Yeah, so you're not even just a dot now, you're an invisible dot at yeah. this distance. And here's a famous uh, zoom in of this, and this is actually yes. the, the faint blue dot photograph, yeah. um, which, and that's the Earth as viewed from outside the solar system. And again, it is visible, but that's it. We don't look at... And you know, from this distance, you don't really know, are we a planet or are we a star? Until we do these other measurements and calculations, you can't tell the difference. Yeah, I mean, the, the normal unit we use in the solar system is the astronomical unit, which is distance from the Earth to the Sun. I normally remember this as being eight light minutes. Yep. Light travels very, very, very fast, 300,000 kilometers a second. That's 50 times around the world in a second. And on that scale, the Moon light takes one and a half seconds to get to the Moon. Yep. And the sun, it's eight minutes. Yep. And that's one astronomical unit. Um, and so Jupiter is five astronomical units from the sun. Yep. Yeah. Saturn is about 12, and uh, Neptune at the edge is about 30 astronomical units out. So that gives you a sense of how big these things are. These planets are very tiny and very far apart yeah. from each other. And that's something a lot of people get wrong. That's right, that these things are relatively close and nearby. No, they are very far, and this is important as we talk about in space. It's, they're very hard to get to and understand and study. And also, the planet's not evenly spaced. So here is our own solar system, and what you can see is these dots in the middle are the uh, inner planets. Yep. So that's uh, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. And you know, Mars is one, one and a half astronomical units south. So everything's in the one and a half. And then you get enormous gap until there is five for Jupiter and then 10 for Saturn and then all the way up to 30 for Uranus. Yeah. So the bit of stuff that we think a lot about because we live in it is actually a very small group huddled close to the sun. Exactly. Most of the system is this outer place, which is very vast and empty. I mean, the planets out there are very big, but they're very spread out. We're very interplanet centric.